All right, so we'll get started. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Vanessa, and I am a program coordinator with um, DVC Outreach and Welcome Services in our CAPE program. Um, with me tonight, I have two of my colleagues, Mercy Pono, who's another program coordinator for Outreach and Welcome Services, and then we also have um, Nicholas Diaz, who is a program assistant for Welcome Services and Outreach. Uh, as you can see, you are not able to ask any questions or raise your hand. And so what we ask is that if you have any questions, if you can please fill out our Google form, you can see the link above my head. And then um, when we're going through over the PowerPoint, you'll be able to see the link on um, each of the slides so that um, you know where to go to ask the questions. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll be um, answering the questions for you all. Um, if there are any questions that are more personal um, that we um, wouldn't want to share out with the whole group of the answers, then we will be emailing you to give you that, um, the answers to the question. And so um, don't be alarmed if we don't answer your question directly at the end, as well as um, if we've gone over some of the stuff that I know we know that some people have put in questions already um, um, as of yesterday. And so if we've gone over some of the things we probably or adjust those questions directly as well. Um, and since they'll be answered throughout the presentation. And so um, we're just gonna get started today. Um, welcome again. Um, so um, one more time, this is the link if you have any questions. Uh, so it's just a tiny url.com backslash DVC enrollment. Simple. Go into it and you'll just fill out our um, Google form and then they'll put it on um, a sheet for us to be able to keep track of them. So before getting to our enrollment process, um, I do want to mention our 4CD Promise or our FT3 program, which stands for First Time Plus Full Time Equals Free Tuition. And this is a program um, where all first time students can get their first two years free. Uh, as far as tuition. And so um, there are a few things that you do have to meet for that. So you do have to be a first time college student, which everyone um, that's uh, every graduating high school seniors um, will be a first time college student. If you do happen to take classes um, concurrently while you're in high school, that doesn't count for you. It's once you're um, actually beginning uh, or you're a first time college student. I'm sorry. I was just going to tell you, we can't see the screen, so. Oh, oh it says it's talk. Give me one second. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so let me go back. So, okay, um, here, this is our, um, enrollment link, our, our question link, so tinyurl.com backslash DVC enrollment. And again, you'll see it on um, the rest of the PowerPoint slides and um, you'll see it above me throughout the presentation. For CD Promise, first time, plus full time, plus free tuition. So um, back to where uh, you have to be a first time college student. So if you were, if you're taking classes concurrently while you're in high school, you'll be able, um, you'll still be considered a first time college student. It um, counts right uh, so after you've graduated high school and you're no, no longer concurrently, then that's when you are a first time college student. Um, you'll want to enroll in a minimum of 12 units, so which is um, equivalent to our full time at DVC. Uh, you'll also want to complete a quick FT3 pledge, and this is just you go onto our um, 4C. Um, on this web, web page and you basically pledge to say that you're going to meet these requirements that you're a first time student you to enroll in a minimum of 12 units and then um, the other few requirements that i'll go over in a little bit and then we are um, pledging that we will pay for your tuition for the first uh, two years you'll also need to complete a um, free application for federal student aid or a fafsa or um, a dream act application and this is just to ensure that you are receiving um, all the financial aid that you're eligible for. And the FAFSA is federally funded, whereas our um, FT3 is state funded. And so it's just to make sure that um, you're receiving all the funds that um, you can get. And it one thing to also note is that with 
our FT3, as mentioned, you just have to be first term college student and have a minimum of 12 units. Uh, you, it does not go based off of household income, whereas FAFSA does go based off of household income. And so if, um, even if you feel like you won't be able to um, be eligible for any um, financial aid through FAFSA, you'll still want to complete it to be able to be eligible for the FT3 program. Um, you will um, have to have, you will um, get an educational plan on file as you go through these steps. And then um, you'll want to complete your 12 units with a minimum GPA of 2.0 or higher. And so that's um, about a C average. And if you do um, find that you are struggling academically while you're at DVC, we do offer a lot of free tutoring um, services and other support services that can help you to make sure that you're successful in meeting that um, 2.0 GPA so that you can continue to have um, the FT3 program pay for your tuition because you will have to meet that um, 2.0 for you to be able to continue uh, for the rest of the semesters. Okay, so now we're going to get into the enrollment process for high school graduates. There's a couple of slides that'll go over information. And then um, after that, I'm gonna actually show you guys, I'm gonna go to our webpage and show you guys each of the steps um, and go actually into the steps to show you how to complete them. And so our five important steps to enroll, uh, we have the application, orientation, um, placement, which uh, used to be called assessments, um, academic advising, and registration. You'll want to complete steps one through four, so application, orientation, placements, and academic advising to receive an early registration date. And for um, graduating high school seniors, this is May 7th. And um, this is the early, completing these will ensure that you're getting the earliest registration date possible for yourself, um, which if you don't complete these four steps, um, your registration date may be two or three weeks later or even a month later. And uh, it's very important to have this registration date because each day and each hour classes are filling up. And the longer that it takes for you to go in and register and to be eligible to register, the more likely is that the classes that you really want are going to start getting full. So you'll re you, you want this early registration date. So our step one application, you'll apply online through um, dvc.edu. <clears throat> when you're going to do the application, you'll wanna have your social security number on handy if you have one um, and your high school transcript. And it's important to have this so you're not um, going around looking for it. Uh, I do wanna note that you do not need your social security number to put in through the application. But if you do have one, um, we recommend that you have it with you because if you complete the application and you don't put in your social security number, you have to come to our um, admissions and records to be able to get that social security number linked to your account. And the social security number is what links your account to your FAFSA. And so it links you to your financial aid. And so you'll want to make sure that you just have that when you're filling up the application so you don't have to go through these extra um, steps and hoops to be able to get that into your account. You want to create a CCC apply or open CC account. Um, you will see it as CCC apply or open CCC, but they're both the same thing. When you create it, it's just like creating any um, online account that you've created in the past for um, say social media or anything like that. You'll create a username, um, a password, you'll create a, a security pin code, and then some security questions and answers you'll wanna write this information down because this um, is through the state. It is a, uh, so CCC apply is for all California community colleges. Once you create this account, it'll be the same account that you'll use if you apply to any other California community college. And so it's not through DVC. That means that if um, you need your password reset or you don't remember your username or can't remember your security information, we can't help you with that. You'd actually have to contact CCC Apply them, uh, the company itself. And we've heard that there's very long wait times um, for that, for them to get back to you or for them to be on the phone. So we just recommend that you have this information in a safe place that you can go back to just in case you ever forget. Um, another thing to note is that the system is case sensitive. So when you are 
of putting your password down, just make sure that you're writing it um, through case sensitive. So with the application, um, this part is really important because this is where students start to trip up is uh, because you have to submit two applications. And so instead of one, um, we're submitting two, which the first one is for this spring. So this current term right now, you'll submit um, as a high school student enrolling in a college class. So you're gonna be submitting it as a concurrent high school student. And the reason why you're gonna be doing this is because you're gonna be taking a counseling 95 class during the spring semester, which is that step four academic advising part. Um, and you'll, so you'll wanna get it done either in this upcoming April and um, May so that you can get uh, meet with the counselor and get your classes ready for, for the fall term. So when that registration date on May 7th comes up that you're able to just go on and register right away. The second application is for summer. And this is the application you're gonna be putting down as a first time college student. And so this sets you up um, as a first time college student. And so you don't have to do those extra steps as that concurrent high school students have to do like um, completing the special admit form to be able to register for a class. So the um, summer application will get you ready as a first time college student. And um, it also gets you ready for fall. So we do um, ask that you can submit a summer application because it sets you up for fall rather than submitting a fall application. And in the future, um, and say like a week or two from now, you're like, oh, actually I wanna get uh, a head start and I wanna take my English class during the summer you'd have to go back and submit a third application for summer. So if you just, if you submit the summer application, you don't have to worry about that. Um, it, you're already set up for summer and then you're set up for fall. I wanna also point out, um, just because you submit the summer application does not mean you have to take the summer class. Um, we just have, we ask you to do it this way. So that if that just in case does happen that you don't have to go in and um, complete another step, you're already um, set up for it. Okay, and then so I am now going to go to our webpage and walk you through um, where you can find all the information for the steps and um, I'll also walk you through the steps. Okay, so um, this is our CBC homepage and to get to the page where it lists out all the steps and information. You wanna come up to the top right-hand corner and you'll see this apply now in bold. So just click on it and it'll bring you to a step to enroll page. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a graduating high school senior section and you'll just click on more for high school seniors. This brings you to another page um, that has even more information. So I would suggest that you um, read through it uh, it does have some information about selecting a major program of study. Um, but if you scroll down here in the, the second section with the blue boxes, you'll see there's a step one, step two, um, step three, step four, and step five. If you click on each of them, it'll populate information. And so what we're going to do is click on this um, apply page or part first. And um, as you're going through it, if, uh, so as I go through it, if you don't catch something or if, if when you're going on to actually go in and apply and you can't remember something, you can always um, come and watch this video, which is like a how-to video and I'm explaining on, on the steps that we'll go over today as well. So to go into CCC apply, it, 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 the CCC apply screen text here is actually hyperlinked. And so you'll just click on that and it'll bring you over. And then this is what the application, um, the CCC apply application page will look like. You'll want to uh, create an account if you don't have one already. So we'll go into there really quickly. Here, so you'll um, have to put in your phone number or um, you can use your email instead, instead if you would rather have your email. I'd also like to point out that if you do use your email and then when you are filling out the rest of the information and you put in an email, Please use your personal email. Do not use your high school email because um, after you graduate high school, 
you're still going to have this account. You're going to still use the CCC Apply account. But once you graduate high school, you're not going to have access to your um, high school email. And so when you, if you're having any issues and you're trying to get um, into the account, you're going to have to, it's going to send stuff to your uh, high school email and you're not going to be able to get into it to get that information. So you'll go through it and then you'll um, just put in your information, like your address and things like that, um, just as um, these other any other online account that you make. So we'll go back to sign in. Um, and then when you start, so once you've created it, you'll be able to sign in. So this is my DVC email. So I created an account already. So go through next. My password. And then once you're signed in, this is what the DVC application page will look like. And um, so you would just click on start a new application and then it will populate for you to fill out some of the information. Um, but as you see here, there's an in progress application because you don't have to do them all in one sitting. You can save it and come back if um, you need to. And so what I'm going to do is just press resume and go through it go through some of the pages with you guys. Um, so the first page is our enrollment. Here you would select the term. So um, again, for the first application, it's spring. For the second application, you would do summer. So you would select spring. Um, you'll select your educational goal, your major category, and then your intended, intended major or program of study to be able to continue. Um, I also want to mentioned for this part is um, if you don't know your specific educational goal or your major category, please don't stress about it too much because these um, the way that you answer these are not set in stone. Once you're at DVC and you're meeting with a counselor and you can discuss um, what you want to do and they'll be able to let you know um, what that what the best educational goal is and for the major for that and um, so that can change and even after a year that you're here or a semester if you want to change any of that you can change it and so it's um, if whatever you're selecting here, if you're not completely sure, it's okay because uh, these aren't set in stone and you're, it's, it's flexible as you go through. Um, so the next page will be the profile. So you'll put it, you'll check um, some of the information that you already put into will um, already be in here that you put into when you made the account. So here is where you'll put your social security number if you have one. Um, and then you would select if your mailing address is the same as your permanent address. And then you'll continue and get to the education part. And so um, the college enrollment status is where you, you really want to pay attention to because of the two distinctions for the application. So for spring, you're going to want to put that you are um, enrolling in high school and college at the same time. It is um, not on for some reason it's not showing on here. Um, it's usually right under this one. And so it'll say enrolling in high school um, and college at the same time. And so you'll choose that one for spring to make you a concurrent student. For the summer application, you choose the first time college, first time student in college after leaving high school. And then you'll also fill out your high school information um, as of when you're going to complete high school, the last school you attended, um, and then there's high school transcript information. And here, you, this is when you'll need your, um, your high school transcript on hand because they're going to ask you what your unweighted high school GPA is. So you'll put that in there. Um, it'll ask you what the highest English course you took in high school, which would be your 11th grade because it'll be the, la the last course that you completed. And so it'll be your 11th grade second semester. What grade you receive, and then the same thing with math, your 11th grade, second semester, and what grade you receive. So you'll put this information in. Um, and it's important to note too that uh, this information is the same exact information that you're going to be putting in for the placement. But unfortunately, um, it doesn't come over to um, DVC. So you do have to submit it again um, through the placement process. And then so here, um, you'll get to the citizenship part. Um, if so, there are different statuses if you're a US citizen, permanent resident, refugee, 
don't abuse it. Um, I do also want to point that if you are undocumented, you would select other. And then right here where there's um, a no documents box, you would just click on that. And so that'll um, populate for us so that um, it sends it to, so that way we know at DEC and we can um, help set you up with resources. Um, as well as here for the US military or Department of Military, you'll put, you'll select what um, applies to you. Okay, so this um, residency page, you'll want to um, go through and just be very careful as you're going through this page. And uh, I would say even double check and triple check the answers that you choose because it's very important as far um, for residency, as far as how much your tuition is. And um, if you're coded as a non-resident student and your tuition is going to be significantly higher per unit than if you are a California resident. And um, if you do happen to make a mistake and accidentally click the wrong box, as you're going through the, the residency information, you will um, have to actually come into um, American um, Diablo Valley College and go to the admissions and records and show them proof of your residency. And so you will have to bring actual um, documentation and proof that you are, have been a California resident. And um, sometimes it can take a, um, it can take a while for that to go through in the system. And um, so you just want to make sure that you don't have to do that and that you're getting coded as a California resident if you are. And so you just want to pay attention to the answers that you put in here. Um, it also, depending on what you answer, may populate up other things. And so it's important to just make sure that as you're going through that you're selecting the right answers and before you save and continue and before you um, actually submit the application that you double check the answers for it to make sure that you're being coded right. You'll, um, it'll ask you, ask you out of state activities and special residency categories. Um, the next few pages I'm not going to go through, but there is an even interest page where it's just going to ask you about some things that you um, may be interested in, like athletics and um, work study and things like that. Um, and then if there's any needs that you have. And um, this is also to link you up to any resources that we have on campus. And then there's a de demographic information page where you just um, answer some demographic questions. Once you're done with that, you'll be able to um, review the whole application and then you'll be able to submit it over to um, DVC. So once you um, submit the spring application, you um, got the first one done. We recommend that you wait 24 hours to um, complete the summer application because we have been having um, some students not having the summer application go through because in the past we've uh, had them have you all submit the spring and the summer at the same time right after each other. But now we have um, some more spam filters put into place. And so the system is checking off the summer application to the spam application because it's happening right after the spring application. And so just so that um, we try and limit that, we recommend that after completing the spring application, you wait 24 hours to complete the summer application. Um, with that being said, and we'll go back here. And um, for step two for online orientation, you won't be able to complete this step until you've completed the summer application. And so you've submitted it as a first time college student and it has processed. And so it takes about 24 hours for the application to process. And um, once you submit the first one, it'll send over your student ID um, number and your email information, your inside information. So um, once you submit the summer application, uh, it'll take about 24 hours for that to process, and then you'll be, you should be able to come and start completing step two, which is online orientation. Um, you won't be able to have access to online orientation until you've um, had that summer application put in because the online orientation isn't accessible to concurrent college students. And so for that spring application, you're considered concurrent. So you'll have to have that um, first time college student designation. Um, on here, there is a link here to online orientation and um, also in Spanish if you want to click on this, but I'm going to take you through another route to show you how you can get to it. And so if you just scroll up, um, 
right next to the supply now link, there's also an insight hyperlink. So you'll just click on that um, and then insight login. And you would here select student. And this is going to bring you to the insight login page. And um, so once you get your email with your, your student ID number and your username, you'll be able to come in here, put in your username and put in the password. And so your original password is going to be your birth date, um, your six digit birth date, so month, month, day, day, um, year, year. And you'll put that in and then it'll prompt you to log in and put in your own original password. Uh, you know, this page you'll also be able to, if you forget your password, look up here. Um, if you can't remember your username, you can look up your username uh, or change your password or anything like that. So I'm gonna log in. And then this is what our insight page looks like. And so there's a lot of tiles on this page. Uh, I want to note that you can move them around. So once you log in, if you know that you're gonna be using the registration tile or payment tile a lot and you want it up here in the corner, you can put it there so that you know exactly where it is. Um, but I would just say look through, I mean, you can see where each of the tiles are. If by chance you're trying to find a tile and you can't find it on here, um, you can always find it here on the left-hand side of the list. And um, this is actually in alphabetical order. So if you are looking for Wi-Fi information, you know where you can find that um, here. Uh, so for anything, any of these things, you can any of the tiles, if you can't find it here, you'll find it on the side. Uh, so orientation is um, right here on my page where you see a little person um, pointing at a screen. And so what you do is just click on orientation and then here it'll bring you to the link of either in English or in Spanish. And so you would click on the one that you prefer. And then this brings you to Canvas. On Canvas, um, this is where a lot of your classes are going to be. Our class shells are going to, um, the information is going to be on. But so the first thing you'll be introduced on Canvas is your online orientation. As you can see, um, our sister colleges are also on here because our orientation is district wide. Um, so you don't have to do if you plan on taking any classes at LMC or CCC. In the future, you won't have to do the orientation again. It, it checks it off for all of them. And so to get started, you just click on to get started. But I'm going to take you over to the modules so I can show you um, about each of the, a little bit about each of the modules for the online orientation. Um, each page here, so each little bo um, box is a separate page. And there's going to be either things you have to read or um, videos on each of the page to give you information. So um, another thing to note here is you're not able to actually jump around until you have completed that page. So you see that on these pages on the right, there's a green check mark. So I can click into any of these pages if I wanna go back and read that information. But because I haven't gotten anywhere past the prerequisites, there's no green check mark. So if I wanted to scroll down and try and get to the end, I can't click on the quiz because I haven't gone through these pages. And um, so that's just one thing to note. You'll have to get through each page to get the information. Um, there's gonna be a welcome module where you, it has a little introduction video, some instructions on about the orientation and then um, information about location of the campuses that we have for our district. The next module is our academic basic module. Um, so it'll go over the academic calendar, our priority registration, um, what prerequisites and co-requisites are, um, academic expectations and standing. Then we have a whole module on support services. And so it talks about counseling, um, educational planning, um, and then different support services that we have across the campuses that um, you'll wanna take um, advantage of to and use those services. There's a whole module on financial aid, on the cost of attendance. Um, there's a um, area about the FT3 program, which we spoke about earlier, or in the California College Promise Grant. There's also some um, student conduct module that talks 
about um, standards of student conduct and um, things like that. And it's, it's really important as you go through the orientation that you don't just flow through it, um, especially our um, pages on policies and procedures, because you are expected to um, follow these, even if you blew through it and um, didn't know by chance, then um, you're, you're still expected to um, follow them. And so you may go through it and um, not realize that, not seeing that, oh, there's a specific date to drop your class. Um, if you don't drop it before that, it's gonna be on your transcript as a W. And so after that date, if you go and drop it and you see that on your transcript and then you come to admissions and records and say, well, you know, I didn't like, I didn't know, like, can I get this erased um, or taken off? It's, very, it's not going, you're not gonna allow that. It, you're, you're expected to know these things. And so it's important that you go through and you read through them and you know them um, because you will still have the consequences of them if, even if you don't know it specifically. Uh, we have a, our last section is on technology. And so um, it goes a little bit into the insight and then your student email um, gives you more information about this canvas and then just kind of a review. And at the end, there's actually a quiz and that quiz, you'll have 10 questions. You'll only need to um, receive eight questions correct out of the 10 to be able to be considered orientation complete. If you get less than, than eight, then um, they will not consider your orientation as being completed. And so you're actually able to take the quiz as many times as you want until you get to that, at least that eight answers correctly. And so you'll know you've officially completed orientation and once you see a big congratulations page um, and it'll just it'll let you know that you have completed it and so you just want to make sure that you get to the quiz and then that you complete that quiz with at least eight out of ten correct to be able um, to be considered as orientation completed so now we're going to go back to um, the apply now page And scroll down um, and talk about step three. So step three um, is our online placement process. And so there's a link here to visit the assessment page. So we're gonna go over that. And um, this is just our assessment center page. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see that there's an online placement process section. And then there's also um, an accordion style thing here. What you're going to be completing is this first one. So if you're graduating this year from a US accredited high school, just click on this. It gives you a little bit of information. There's also a how-to video here if you need to. Um, and then you'll just click on enter transcript information. And um, you'll have to log in with your insight information again. Um, but if you're already logged in for anything else, it'll just automatically pop up. And so you'll click on English and math or English as a second language and math, depending on um, what's, uh, what's better for you. And then it'll bring you to this. And um, this here, you're going to answer if you receive the EAP or CAS um, English test or what status you receive. You would just click on it if you know. If you don't know, that's completely fine. Click don't know. Hit next. Um, and then it's going to ask your um, grade for your 11th grade English class that you earned in the second semester. So your um, last completed English course. Do wanna um, note here that with COVID, we do know that some high schools had moved to pass no pass. And if your, your class was a pass no pass, you would just select the letter grade that you would have received if it wasn't. Um, so you would just select the course. And so we're gonna go in here and select 11th grade English, and um, we'll say that I got a B plus. And you would hit next. And then you put your unweighted high school GPA on here. So again, this is the same information you entered in the application when you were entering your high school information. So let's say I got a 3.2. And then it'll bring you over and you'll just look through and make sure that it's correct. If it is, you just click on this. If not, you try again and it brings you back and you'll just um, put in the information, the correct information. So the information is correct. And then it's the same exact thing for math. So um, I don't know about this. 
And um, let's say that I took the calculus my 11th grade and I got a B minus. Next, so the G unweighted GPA would still be the same. Check out the information, the information is correct, and voila, it gives you your placement for English and math. So what you'll see here is for English, it'll show you the information that you um, input, and then it'll write under it, it'll tell you what you're eligible for. So here it says, um, I'm eligible for English 122, but if I would like additional support, I can consider in, um, enrolling in English 122L. Each, uh, both of these courses are, uh, the information for them are right here. They are both English 122, just the 122L is um, added and added extra two hours that um, you're with the professor to get support. And so you can take either one. Um, if it does happen to say though, that for this, instead of just saying eligible, if it says you're required to take English 122L, you will have to take 122L rather than um, this is just at, um, letting me know that it's um, recommended or that if I would like that additional support. When you scroll down to math, it's a little different because math um, is broken up dependent on majors. And so if you're a STEM major, there's a specific math. If you're business, there's specific math. If you're other major, um, there's another specific math. Um, so here it says that for business and STEM, it looks like it's the same math that I'm eligible for, but for the other majors, it's different. And um, just like here, just like the English one, um, it'll also say that if you're recommended to take the support course with it, or if you're required to take the support course with it. Um, math support courses are um, the same number, um, just a zero instead of a one. So a support course for this would be um, math 9-2. In zero nine two. I do want to mention uh, these here. You can kind of see so um, the, the support math zero four two is math one point two. Uh, if you do have to take the support class, if you're required, or if you feel like you want to take it and you're you're not required and you you decided you want to take the support anyway, I will say to look at when you're searching for the class, search for the support course first because uh, the classes are linked together for math. And so they are two separate ones, but they're linked. And so when you're looking up a Math 142 class, uh, not all of those Math 142 classes will have a support course linked to it. Whereas all of these support courses will have a um, 142 course linked to it. And so it's best to look up, um, search for the support course, because if you by chance find this Math 142 class, but you're like, oh, perfect for my schedule, and then you select it and then you go to register and you're required to do a support course and that one doesn't have one and so you have to go and search for another one so that's just something to um, keep in mind you want to after you're done with these you want to email your high school transcripts to this email right here um, and this can be unofficial transcripts uh, they take a photo you can take a photo of it or a screenshot or anything like that and you just send it over you can also print this page um, but I would suggest emailing these results to yourself. So you would just click on it and it'll automatically um, email to your Insight email. But if you want it sent to your personal email, you can um, put it in here and then just click on send email and you'll get these results uh, to your email. And then, so you're all done and set for placement. So we're gonna go back to the apply now page and go to step four, which is academic advising. And so for this, it is your counseling 95 class, or um, if you plan to be an athlete at um, DVC, you'll be taking actually counseling 96. And so um, there is a step by step direction on how to enroll linked right here. Um, but I'm going to actually take you into Insight and um, show you what you have to do to enroll for it. And so if we go back to the home Insight page, so one of the things you will have to do since you're taking it in the spring as a current high school student is you will need to complete the special admit form. And um, you'll be able to find that in the DVC student forms tile. So just look for a green tile with a paper and like a uh, pencil writing on it. You'll click on it. And then all the way at the bottom, you'll find the special admissions form. You'll click on that. And it'll bring you to a submit form page. Um, before complete, 
depending on this complete this form, I also want to point out that right under it, there's a pending and draft form hyperlink. So once you complete the form, you're actually able um, to go into here and see where it's at in the process. I'm going to hit complete this form. And then you would fill out here your parent and legal guardian information. So their um, first name, last name, and their email, as well as your principal or counselor or any um, school designee that your school has set up that can approve for you to take the, the classes at DVC. And this is because um, since you're a concurrent student, it, they have to send the form to your parent and legal guardian and your school to get approval from both of them to say that you can continue, you can actually take a class. So once you complete that, you are putting that information, we'll hit continue. You can read through this because it does give some guidelines and your responsibilities and instructions. We're going to hit on next. Um, and so this is the form you're actually going to fill out. You're going to select the term. It will be 2022 spring. Um, you will select your high school. Let's say I go to Akalani, um, you put in your phone number, grade level. Again, your parent and legal guardian, first and last thing here. And then this is the part that you want to pay attention to is uh, you're going to put in the section that you want to register for. And so here we're going to already put counseling 95 because that's what we know we're registering for. We'll have to go and look for the section. And I'll go in and then we'll take you and show you how to find the section. So we'll go back to Insight in the homepage. And so for this step um, to find the section is the same step you're, steps you're going to take to register for all your other classes and find all of your other classes as well. Um, so you'll look for this red tile that says plan in progress with the big check mark. And then you'll go to plan and register. Okay. And so this will bring you um, to your plan and register form. And you'll be able to um, click through these semesters. So you, if you just use these, just click to summer or fall. Um, but right now we're going to look for counseling 95, so we're going to stay in the spring. And what you'll do is up here on the top right hand corner, there's a course search. And so I'm going to type in T O U N S 095 for our counseling 95 class in search. And so um, it, it shows here counseling 95, and then I'm going to click on view available section. And then it'll populate all the sections. Um, you'll also want to look over here at the filter and make sure that you're complete. You're clicking the specific location or the term that you're looking for, or if there's any other information you want to add um, before going through. And so um, it's going to list all the sections here that are for Counseling 95. And so for this, um, starting here is for our spring. You'll want to go through and look at each one because they aren't actually put in order, um, in a specific order. So like, as you see, this one is on Jan in January, and then this one's May, and then this one's April, and another April, and then another May. So they're, they're listed kind of randomly. And so you'll want to um, look through and find one that hasn't already happened, that still has seats available, and um, that you would work for your schedule. Um, I do want to point out to that, you know, we, I mentioned earlier that um, May 7th is the registration date. So you want to try and get um, your counseling 95 done before then so that you're um, already been able to meet with the counselor and have the, the classes kind of picked out for you. So that way, you know, so you want to look for the earliest one that you can do. And um, so let's just say that we're going to do this um, April 26th, the 28th one. It looks good for me, it's online. Um, and so you see here, it says counseling 95, all of them. And then there's four digits at the end. And so that is our actual section number. And so this one is um, 9004. So what I'm gonna do is go back um, to the special admit form. So 9004, and then we also have instructor um, Hannah G. So here we've put, the section number, and then you can put in um, the professor's information. And then you would submit, you would click to sign, um, sign that information, and then you'd submit the form. 
and then it gets sent over to your parent legal guardian and um, your your school designee to prove. And then once that gets approved, so they both get approved through there, it gets sent to admissions and records. And then admissions and records will process it. Once it's been processed, you're able to register. And so um, since that is a process, uh, uh, can take a little while, you may put in a section for this form. And then when it's actually finally time for you to register, that that section is full. Cool. And so the um, thing to note about the, the special admit form is even though you do select a specific section, when it, once it has been approved, you're actually able to register for any of the classes um, that are in the same course. And so even though it was approved for this, this 9004 section, you're able to actually register for any counseling 95 class um, that uh, is still open and that you can go for. And so I want to go back to um, the page and show you. So when you're looking, and this is just for the search. And so what you'll want to do is this is the class that you choose. You just click on here at section to schedule, look through it, make sure it's the same information. Um, if it still works for you, You'll want to check here, make sure there's um, no prerequisites. As far as counseling 95, there's no prerequisites, but um, when you're registering for all your other classes, you'll want to check this information because uh, there may, if there are any prerequisites, you want to make sure that they're clear before you um, your registration date. You'll also want to check this ad additional information for all your other classes because we do have classes that are set up for our. Um, our learning communities, and we have a few learning communities on the campus. And so if it's with our learning community, the only way you can register for that class is if you're a part of the learning community. And so you don't want to just add the section to your um, your plan and progress tile. And then you go on the day of your registration, you press register, and you can't register, and you have to find something else because of this. So it's important to look over the additional information. But so to add it, you just add the section. And then it'll tell you up here that it's planned on the schedule. So we can go here, right here to back to plan and schedule on the left hand side. And then it takes you back to your calendar view of the plan and progress. And so you'll see here, it's the same section for counseling 95. And then if it, this one, um, it has a specific um, information about uh, when you're meeting. So this and where it's at, so then it'll mark on here, okay, on Tuesdays, I'm going to be in from um, four to about seven, and this Thursday. For Counseling 95, um, if it is in person, it's either going to be two days for a couple of hours, or it will be on like a Saturday for, for six hours. Um, but if it's online, then it'll be more of on your own time. So this is what it'll look like for all your other courses as well, because it'll populate on here to show you when. So that way you also know if any of your courses are look like they're going to overlap or how much time you have in between them. And this just gives you a visual component for it. Um, so this, once you have it on here, and so it, it shows here that it's just planned. To actually officially register, you'd have to come up to this right hand um, side and press register now, or you can click on this register button. The register now will register you for all the classes. If you have multiple here, um, if you want to just do one at a time, you click here for the register. And then um, once it's officially registered, it'll pop up here as a green check mark and say that you're registered. And so that way you know you're officially registered in the class. Um, if we go back, so that's, that's the process on how to register for Counseling 95 and um, your future courses. I do wanna go back to our home um, page on Insight really quickly and um, bring uh, your attention to the My Schedule tile. Once you've registered for your classes, you'll wanna click on this My Schedule and it'll populate the class, your class schedule. And so um, if you're officially registered, it will show you on there. If you have not officially registered for the class, it will not pop up. And so this is um, just important to go and look on just to double check your register for all your classes. But so that is the steps for our enrollment process. Um, before we open it up for questions, I do want to go back really quickly to our homepage and um, our DVC page. And I wanna take you guys to our welcome services page as well. 
um, where you're able to find a lot of this information. So if you just search for welcome services, it's the first one that pops up. And on here, there, if you scroll down, there are some how-to guides um, for getting started, registration, insight, grades, and stuff. And so this is um, a good resource for you guys to have um, so that you, if you do have any questions or you need help with um, some of the, the things and you can't remember, there's a how-to here for it. We also offer um, some of assistance virtually. If you can't come in person, um, you can click on the virtual lab request here. And so with that, um, that is what we have now for the presentation, but we'll open it up for some of the questions we had. And again, again, if um, you have any questions now, um, please just go to the time you are on, put them in. Um, we have a couple of people who asked if they could um, watch this presentation at a later time or if the recording will be mail, um, emailed out. Um, yes, we are recording the session and we will be emailing it out to everybody who registered for this particular session. Um, but I would also encourage you to look at, because we're going to have to close caption the um, video before we can send it out. Um, so that's going to take a few days. Um, so I would highly encourage you to also, um, we're going to email out an enrollment guide um, specifically for the class of 2022. Um, follow that and then also utilize the resources on the welcome services page um, that Vanessa just pointed out. Um, let's see. There are a couple about the um, 4CD pledge. I'm going to let Nick um, go ahead and answer those. Thank you, Mercy. Um, so we had one kind of question concern. Um, someone referenced that they completed the FT3 pledge um, right now, uh, and that would be for the spring semester. Um, unfortunately, that wouldn't be the correct pledge to complete it. Uh, for fall, that's gonna open up on May 1st. So if you have accidentally completed the FT3 pledge um, as of right now, um, I would say go ahead and email the uh, the following email a college promise at dbc.edu um, and the person that submitted this question I'll go ahead and respond to you directly to, to email um, but go ahead and just notify college promise at dbc.edu uh, let them know that you are a graduating high school senior uh, that plans to enroll for the fall semester and you accidentally completed the wrong FT3 pledge and uh, they'll be able to work with their IT uh, team to be able to remove the uh, FT3 pledge that was submitted for spring and uh, manually enter it for the fall semester. That way, everything's taken care of and good to go uh, when you uh, join us in the fall. The next FT3 question, um, someone asked, uh, when is the FAFSA due for the FCD promise? Um, Ideally, the sooner you submit the FAFSA, the better. Um, but the the hard set deadline for the fall semester uh, is going to be um, December first. So students will have until December first to be able to submit their FAFSA or California Dream Act, whichever one they're eligible to complete uh, by December first. If you do end up missing the December first, then I believe uh, the College Promise Committee uh, just has that hard set deadline. They don't typically do accommodations unless um, the student or parent had an extenuating circumstance. Maybe they were having issues completing the FAFSA application, um, in which case they have an FT3 appeal process. But um, ideally, I'd recommend trying to complete that as soon as possible. That way, if there are any issues, you can troubleshoot it and have that on file. And was that all the FT3s? Let me just double check here. Yeah, I think that was the last FT3 question. Okay, um, so there is one, uh, it's a dual question and um, the second part of the question was asked a couple of times. So I'll answer the first question first. How does um, high school AP credit roll over into my DVC transcript course selection? This is something that you wanna ask your academic counselor um, because it depends on, uh, you can go into our, ma our main catalog and look up all the AP scores and to see how they um, would translate or, or tra uh, transfer over to DVC. Um, but you really need to talk to uh, one of our academic counselors to see how it's gonna play a role into your or an impact your um, 
your, excuse me, educational plan. Um, but you do want to ask a second question. So the first question is, how is DVC going to receive the AP scores and how are you going to get credit for it here? The second question would be, how will those AP um, scores transfer to your four-year university? So we may accept it um, as like say, um, if you took an English AP, we, we may accept it as a replacement for English composition. However, a particular department at say UC Berkeley may not. So you always wanna ask that second question. It gets um, very detailed, these answers. So we are not equipped to answer those questions. Um, that's why um, we're, we're highly encouraging you to talk to your academic counselor about it. Um, and just a side note, we do not assign counselors um, at the college level. You get to select who you want to see. Um, the second part of the question, and um, a, a couple of other people had this question too, is, is it possible to transfer after one year at DVC? So um, I'm going to begin the answer with a question. Where do you want to transfer to? Um, if you want to transfer to the CSU, the California State University, or UC, University of California systems, then what happens is once you graduate, if you take classes with us the following fall, you are on a transfer track with us. And the transfer track requires that you, you um, complete about 60 units with us before you can transfer. Now, if you can complete 60 units in a year, um, you're like Superman. <laughs> um, uh, that's a lot of units to um, cover in a year. Uh, so that is a little, uh, the overall answer, or general answer would probably not likely, it's not impossible, um, but um, not likely because the other questions would be, did you take transferable uh, credits as a concurrent enrollment student? Um, while you were attending high school. So there are other questions involved in that. So the second part is, okay, if you're not transferring to a UC or a CSU, you may um, wanna transfer to a private or an out of state. It depends on their requirements. Some privates or um, out of states will require the same, pretty much the same thing that our UC CSUs. Um, and some require just the one year. Um, so uh, you'll need to, Again, it depends on where you're transferring to. It depends on your major. Um, uh, definitely UC, CSU, uh, your, your, your chances are, are, are much slimmer. Um, so again, that's a, a question that you would ask your counselor so they can go over. Again, we're, we're answering the questions blind because we don't know if you've taken college classes while you were um, in, in high school. We have had um, students who've taken so many um, uh, credits in high school um, that they were able to transfer in one year into the UC system, but that's very rare when we see that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Um, if you, uh, so if we sent in an application but never received confirmation, do we need to reapply? No. Um, as uh, Vanessa said, uh, the, it takes about 20 minutes to 24 hours for an application to process. So if you do not get your DVC account information with 24 hours, you should definitely contact us. Um, for this particular student, we already have your contact information. So we'll be following up with you in email. Uh, Vanessa, I'm gonna have you answer this one. Um, if you went to multiple high schools when applying, do you need to give all of your high school transcripts? So um, the only, so no, the short answer is no. Um, the high school transcripts that you need to send in is the ones that have um, the grade for the class that you're putting in for the placement. So that uh, the ones that have your 11th grade um, second semester English and math. Uh, one other thing though to note about that is if you are planning on um, being in a prerequisite form and you have to um, give proof of a prerequisite and for your high school transcript, you'll, you may, the, if the class is at a different high school that you had previously been in, you may need those transcripts for that. But as far as for the placements, you would only need to send in the one, uh, the one for your 11th grade um, that has your 11th grade English and math. But um, I'd also want to point out um, with that being said, we don't, we would need a picture of the full transcript. It wouldn't just be of that specific section. Like we need the whole um, transcript with your name and, and information up at the top as well. And then also um, Vanessa, for my 11th grade second semester English class, 
I was given an NM, no mark for my grade. I'm wondering how will that affect my enrollment? So I'm not completely familiar with no mark, but um, I'm guessing that's um, just so you're not, you don't have um, a grade at all for it. And so what you could do is just put in um, the grade that you may have gotten that first semester. So for the English, or if you are um, retaking that class uh, or that the second semester for that class to put in um, what you had received during that time. But it would be the it would you would just put in the the last one that you had completed. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer this because we we touched on it earlier. Um, does DVC have and a specific relationship with specific UC campuses? I've heard, excuse me, I've heard a certain California community colleges. Um, being able to tag students to, for transfer to a specific UC campuses. Um, so the tag system is, that's a transfer um, into the UC system. It's tag is a transfer admission guarantee. Um, so this is not just our, our community college, other colleges, our sister colleges, et cetera. Um, that is a tag program that is um, based on the UC system, who, whoever decides that they want to tag. So. Um, of the UCs that we have, three do not participate in TAG, uh, UC Berkeley, UCLA, and UC San Diego. Uh, so what some students will do, basically what TAG is, the best way I can describe it is it's an early admissions guarantee. So um, usually you have to complete a certain amount of units, like 40, and it usually happens um, in the last fall semester. Um, so the fall before um, your last spring semester, I should say. Um, so let's say you're gonna transfer, you've been at DVC for two years um, and you're gonna transfer next spring, 2023, you would apply for the tag to one UC. You can only tag to one of the UCs that participate. Um, so let's say, UC Davis is your second choice. So you tag to UC Davis. You will most likely find out in fall. It really depends on the UC and also it depends on your major and as to when you're gonna find out. Um, but some find out in fall if they're in the, the tag program. If they are, they know that they're guaranteed, uh, guaranteed a seat in UC Davis. But let's say UCLA is their number one pick. So what they do is they get the tag to UC Davis uh, they will go ahead and apply to UCLA. And then if you get into UCLA, great. You don't have to take the tag to UC Davis. You just go to UCLA. But in the event that you do not get into UCLA, you know that you're guaranteed a spot into UC Davis. Um, so uh, we have a lot of tag and transfer workshops that our transfer center offers. So I highly recommend um, that you attend them as you are um, when you become a student with us. Uh, and uh, find out early um, and ask your uh, counselor when you go through the Counseling 95 and then um, in subsequent visits to your counselor, you should um, follow up on that. Okay, uh, so there's that. And then um, since we're on transfer, it's um, what is the transfer rate of DVC students to UC Berkeley and UC Davis after two years? Um, I can't specifically say after two years. Um, students come to us with um, a lot of different goals. Um, so, and they change them. It's not like um, changing your major in the UC or CSU system. That can be very difficult. With us, a student can put on their application that they just wanna get an associate's degree. And then after a semester or two semester may decide, you know what, I actually really like college. So I want to do beyond my associate's degree and transfer to a UC. So it's hard for us to track how many students have actually um, set a goal of transferring to a UC Berkeley or UC Davis and then track how, how long it took them to get there. Um, so, but I can tell you, we are the number one transfer institution to UC Berkeley. We are the, usually the number one on transfer institution to UC Davis. We dropped to number two. Um, this year, but we're going to get back up to number one. Uh, so we, we do have very strong transfer rates. Yeah. Uh,
Um, is it true you have a higher chance of getting into a four-year college if you transfer after the two, uh, two years? No, that is not true. Um, I know, I like to say, I know that, you know, a lot of you, you just want to be at DVC for two years. That's wonderful. We don't want you to be here five years. You shouldn't be in the community college system five years, but don't put so much pressure on yourself to get out of here in two years. Um, if it does take you three years and depending on your major, um, and sometimes people change their majors, we do have students um, with us for three years. It's okay. You're not going to be penalized if it takes you more than two years. But the important thing is that you're working towards your degree, um, you're earning it, and you're learning along the way. So, um, yeah, um, people see the the community college system as two year, and then the UC universities as four year, and they and they have that in mind: two year, four year. Um, uh, but you just want to concentrate on on completing your unit. Okay. Um, why do we have to enroll in the spring semester if we want to attend in the fall? Uh, what we have covered this evening is, or this afternoon, is um, the registration process for students graduating high school seniors who plan on starting in the fall. The reason why you have to take um, the why you had to submit the spring application as a high school student is because, as Vanessa explained. Step number four, the academic advising piece is in the form of a class, Counseling 95. You want to take that class prior to May 7th, which is your um, the earliest registration date that a graduating high school um, senior can get. So you're going to take that. It's too late in March, but you're going to take that in April, right? April is spring semester. So you have to apply for spring semester. In April, you will still be a high school student. So you have to apply as a, uh, for a spring semester as a high school student enrolling in a college class. That Counseling 95 class is your initial meeting with a counselor, and that is gonna prepare you for fall to make sure that you are in the correct classes to meet your educational goals. Um, I'm gonna answer that question in email. So uh, do we have an honors program and what's the relationship between that and scholarships to transfer um, universities? So we, we don't have a program per se, but we do have an honors um, club, the um, AGS Honor Society, uh, Alpha Gamma Sig Sigma, which is an honors um, uh, club. And that is a statewide club as well. Um, and there are scholarships that they do offer. Um, and then there's another club that I, I can't think of um, at, the, uh, at the top of it. Um, but the more important question too in here is the scholarships. Uh, we do have a scholarship coordinator. We highly recommend that everybody applies for scholarship just like everybody should apply for FAFSA. Scholarships is free money. Um, so the way we do it at DVC is you have one application that actually um, will go out to several different um, scholarships that depending on how you um, answer the questions in the application, it will link you to scholarships that, um, that you, that you, um, that you connect with or that you, uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue tied, that you, um, that you qualify for. Um, so we highly recommend you do that. Uh, and um, yes, so there, there are scholarships that you can earn while you're at DVC to help you pay for books, et cetera, um, at DVC. And then there's also transfer um, scholarships. So the highest one in our district is the Kennedy King, which can be up to $10,000 depending on the year. Um, there's also nationwide um, scholarships like the Jack Kent Cook, which is I believe uh, 50 or $60,000. Um, so uh, you wanna look into those scholarships. It, it's, it's free money. So you wanna look into that. Okay, the rest of the, the questions, um, uh, we, we are gonna go ahead and answer in email because um, some of it we're gonna to have to give you step-by-step -step directions on how to um, troubleshoot what you're asking us about. And we've given you a lot of information here this evening, so we don't wanna confuse anything. Um, and then um, some of it, we're going to have to look up your account information. So um, please expect a, an email uh, from us 
uh, one of the three of us uh, within uh, either uh, tomorrow or um, we'll be off the rest Fridays. Uh, we won't be working, um, but if not tomorrow on Monday, okay? All right, anything else? Well, as I'm going to put in a plug uh, for a program that uh, we all su supervise. Uh, for those of you who have stayed, because we've been over an hour now, uh, thank you so much for your patience. We all supervise the Student Ambassador Program. Uh, the Student Ambassador Program is a great leadership opportunity. It's a great way to build your um, your resume. Uh, you know, beyond. Uh, you know, it's going to look good when you, you apply to a four year university. It's going to look great when you apply to a job because that's what you're getting a degree for, right? To get a good job. Uh, and then uh, student ambassadors do things like uh, give campus tours. They work in our enrollment lab at Welcome Services. They help with events. Um, they go to high schools with us um, whenever they, they can. They run our social media sites. If you are interested in becoming a student ambassador, uh, in the fall semester, we only hire first time college students. So that's up your alley. If you're interested in it, um, then you can go to our student ambassador page. We're actually hiring um, uh, right now, but these are current students that we're looking at um, right now. But again, you would look at uh, for us in the, in the fall. Um, if you are on social media, you can follow our accounts. Um, again, it's run by our student ambassadors. Uh, it is Instagram, we and uh, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, um, we are DVC Welcome. And uh, on Facebook, we are uh, DVC Welcome Services. So if you look us up um, and our links are there. Uh, so I highly encourage you to look into that. It is, um, it, it is, it is a very uh, hard to get in and it's, it's competitive. Uh, and so you're gonna have to fill out an application, et cetera. But, um, uh, I hope you're interested. It, it, it's a great way to get to know the college and know the services that we offer as well. So thank you so much for that. Go ahead. All right. And so with that, um, we haven't had any questions coming in or anything. So and that is the end of the presentation. So you can all head out and have a good night. And we hope to see you at the BBC campus in fall. Thank you.